Well, we're very excited about um, getting started with this uh, this season. We uh, open up at Houston on uh, Friday evening in Houston, so it's uh, it's going to be quite a challenge for us. Houston was ranked a, a, a third in their conference behind UConn and South Florida, and they've been uh, receiving votes in the USA Today poll. So um, it's going to be a tough challenge for a, for a young team. We return. Um, you know, three upperclassmen to this team and seven freshmen. So it's been a it's been a different uh, type of year getting ready for the season. But I've been very optimistic with what I've seen so far with the um, with the returners' uh, leadership and the play of our outstanding freshman class. Load offensively, mm -hmm. uh, be a leader out there on the floor. Does that does her role change at all with the the two freshmen you have inside and also with Morella becoming a more offensive threat? I think the great thing for Francesca Pond this year is that she doesn't have to be she, – she's not going to be the primary target like she's been in the past of every opponent we play against. Um, it's been interesting to see her – she still gets the most shots in the two scrimmage games we played, and I haven't put a play in for her this year. And last year I would say 90% of our plays were for her. Um, I don't have to do that because there's so much, so much better spacing on the floor offensively, and we, we play a lot faster than we played in the past. Um, we have a lot more mobility, a lot uh, longer, quicker players. And um, we have scoring come in in our last, in our ex first exhibition game, open exhibition game, we had five players in double figures. It's been a long time since I've seen that. We've consistently scored, uh, shot 50% from the field in all of our scrimmage games, which has been a long time coming. You know, I haven't seen that in a while. So it's been, a, it's been um, exciting to watch her uh, grow um, and become a complete player. She, she actually has, um, Averaged about five assists a game in the first two exhibition games. So, you know, it's one of those things where she doesn't have to force shots. She can get 20 points on 11 shots rather than, you know, 11 points on 20 shots. So I think it's just going to show her total game now um, because she has, you know, tremendous balance inside and outside with scoring. Do, do you expect Fletcher to make a big jump from her freshman year to her sophomore year? I've seen a, a huge improvement, Kiara Fletcher. Um, I think one of the things that's been an advantage for her is is the wing play. I mean, she again, you know, everybody was so focused on Francesca Pond, and and now she's got you know uh, Liz Balagon on one wing, and she's got uh, Pond on the other wing, and then on you know Deasia Jefferson, who was a redshirt freshman um, last year, uh, on another wing, a six-three guard. You know, it's just shown tremendous ability to score. I think that's really helped her her game open up the floor where she can create uh, penetration opportunities and and find her post players or her wings and she's doing a great job leading this team and you know she was our leading returning rebounder coming into this season and when you're point guard you're leading returning rebounder sometimes you worry but um, she's just been a she's been such an impactful player um, at that point position for us and we're we're relying heavily on her leadership this season. What what have you seen from Elizabeth and Liz so far, just in their first you know few months with you, and kind of what are your expectations for them this this season? The surprising thing that I've seen from Elizabeth Dixon and Elizabeth Balagon has been their consistency. Um, usually, when you have freshmen, you know they're very inconsistent. The thing about those two um, that I've appreciated from day one is I've never had to coach effort. Um, they come in every day. They're gym rats. They work extremely hard. They're very focused. Um, both of them have. Tremendous ability to score um, in different ways, and they're very skilled uh, for being freshmen. Uh, but I still think the thing that makes them unique is their is their work ethic and their ability to consistently uh, come in every single day and practice at a high level, and then play at a high level against competition. Staying with the freshmen, you named Lana May one of the captains. What mm -hmm. made her stand out and made her fitting of that role? I think um, Lodamaya is probably the hardest worker, maybe one of the toughest kids I've ever I've ever coached. I mean, she's just her, her dad is a hockey coach back in Finland. Her brothers play hockey. She was raised in that uh, kind of you know atmosphere, and she's just a really tough, hard nosed kid. She's a tremendous student athlete. Um, she's I think her teammates really respect her because of her work ethic and just her um, her desire to be the best. And she's a gym rat again. She she sets the tone for us. Um, defensively, she in practice we keep stats on just about every category, and throughout the first uh, two months of practice, she led us in deflections and steals. So that tells you that's a kid just out there playing really hard. And so I think that's the reason her teammates chose her as a captain. Um, question about Pond. Also, she made the Cheryl Miller Award watch list. I don't think Tex had a nationally had a player on a list like that since maybe Ty Marshall. What will that do for the program? Being that you already had a great recruit class, how will that maybe ramp it up even better? 
Even higher. Well, I think one of the things that was kind of disappointing is that Pond wasn't picked uh, first team all ACC preseason, you know. Um, but I do know that this league is, is filled with talent. I mean, this is a, a year where our recruiting class was ranked seventh in the country but fourth in the ACC. So that gives you an idea of the kind of tr talent that's coming into our league and that's already in our league. And, you know, I, I think Pond is, is one of the best top ten players in the ACC. I think that she has going to have an opportunity this year to showcase that talent. And I think that's because we have more balance and she's going to have more help um, on the perimeter and inside. It, it appears that you may have a more athletic team this year. Does that change your, what you can do defensively? Yeah, it's, it's been fun to watch. I mean, we really get up and down the floor. Um, it reminds me of our team and um, our Sweet 16 team where we could really get out and get in passing lanes. We could press, you know, and for 40 minutes. We can really um, get after people. And I've, I've never seen, um, I've never coached a group of post players that can run the floor at 6'4", six, 6'5", six, the way these guys, these ladies can run. I mean, it's not just Liz Balagon and, and Lorella Kubai. You know, it's on Dioff, who we redshirted last year as a redshirt sophomore. At 6'5", she can really get up and down the floor. And Deasia Gregg, who's a freshman, 6'2", freshman, can really can really go and she can shoot the ball with range. So we've got some we've got some really interesting pieces. Um, again, I think it's just going to be a process. You know, we got to enjoy the, the process. And I think if we can weather some of the early storms, I think that this team could be really special in February. Does the fact that Kubai is probably more comfortable now, uh, now that she's been here for a while, does that increase what she can do on the court also? She had a tremendous summer in Italy with her national team. I mean, she averaged a double-double in the U-20 um, championships, and she was their team captain, and she just kind of blossomed over the summer. And, you know, in our two scrimmage games, she's, she's been um, un unbelievable. Her stats have been really um, impressive. And her presence on the court has made all the difference in the world for a young team. You know, when you have somebody inside that plays with that, that much confidence, it really changes um, things for, for your younger players. And, you know, she's done a great job of leading this, this team and, and really demanding the ball and, and making plays when we really needed her to. And I've been really impressed with, with the play of Lorella Kubai. What are kind of the things that, that you need to have happen for this team to make the tournament, would you say? Um, it's going to be interesting. Um, I think that we've got to um, grow into um, understanding how to play through adversity. You know, anytime you have young players like we do, again, we have one senior and two juniors. So, you know, 90% of our team are freshmen and sophomores. And I think, you know, one of the hardest challenges for freshmen and sophomores is to play through adversity. And on the road, that's adversity. And so those are things that we got to learn to do is win on the road. Last year, we were 15 and three at home. We got to win on the road in this league to win, um, to get in the NCAA tournament. And so one of the things, that's one of, another reason why we're playing so many neutral floor games and away games is because I want these guys to be weathered before we get to ACC play um, and just have those experiences early on. But I do believe that we're going to have to get tremendous play off of our bench. And, and that's, you know, Shannon Scott is out right now injured. Um, but with a back injury, but I do think that we're going to need her to, as a junior, to come in off the bench and give us some, you know, uh, consistency offensively and defensively. And then on die off and 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 Deasia Jefferson, they really are going to have to step up as um, first year players, really, to our system and and give us some some minutes, quality minutes off the bench because. I think our first five is as good as anybody. I think our next three is as good as anybody. It's just a matter of us putting it together night in and night out.